<laughs> when I was nine, I wrote a story about a house eating robot in New Delhi. When I was 11, I wrote a story about a girl from the inner city who had the power to save the world or destroy it. And when I was 15, I wrote a story about a world where only black people could be superheroes. 20, a doomsday story where the last city left on the world was in Kenya. 25, a series of Ramna and Yasha Fix all equipped with demons and elves. At 29, I started a story that eventually became my debut novel, The Halo of Amorous. What do these stories all have in common besides the fact that I have a tendency to kill off my characters? They all have fantasy or science fiction plots. I am a fanatical person. I spend way too much time inside of my character's head. I, it's, it's, sometimes it doesn't have to be a character I wrote. If it's a character and it's fictional and I kind of like latch on to him, yeah, there's a thing that happens. Story isn't a story to me unless somebody's a superpowered angel or a dark maid or a werewolf with maybe homoerotic tendencies. Okay, homoerotic tendencies isn't a superpower, so they'll have like super speed and super strength and maybe homoerotic tendencies. Um, I know there's some people who consider um, homosexuality to be a superpower. I, that's not what I meant. I also not want but need to fill these spaces with faces that look like mine or my neighbors. People who have experienced like marginalization in a way that people who don't look like me haven't experienced. If my angel isn't a divinely powered African American or or if my mage isn't a Desi Indian or if my alpha wolf with his super speed and super powers isn't Korean, I don't want to write it and sometimes I don't even want to read it. My problem is that these characters that I create that are so full of life and color and superpowers, I'm not sure if they're welcome. Now, if we're lucky, and I laugh when I say lucky in the same way that I laugh at clowns, nervously. If we're lucky, we'll get a leading role or something of some significance every blue moon. So in the Avengers, we've got Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, and in Unbreakable, we've got him as Elijah Price. My man, 100 grand, Billy B. Williams as Lando in Star Wars. Will Smith, apparently the magical go-to Negro, with his roles in Men in Black, After Earth, I, Robot, Hancock. I mean, I think that After Earth deserves a particular shout out because it was particularly bad, but that's not. In the Matrix, we had Lawrence Fishburne, Jaden Pinkett Smith, Nona Gay, Gina Torres, that guy from Oz, um, the guy who was the uh, uh, mean uh, commander guy, um, uh, who else, uh, a whole bunch of black people in the Matrix, you know, Zion was like black mega. We have the wonderful, beautiful, iconic Nichelle Nichols in Star Trek as Neota, and we had George as Haruku Sulu, and there's also literature, so we've got Sierra in Shadow Shaper. Every protagonist and side person in any Octavia Butler work, just like pick one up and then like turn the page. Let's go 27, and there's probably a person of color on that page, so she counts like 40 times. 10 points for Gryffindor! The black side. Native Americans had Katniss Everdeen and everybody else in the scene until a handy dandy movie adaptation magic, and then everybody turned white, so I don't know if that counts. Oh, yeah. June from the Legend series. And in the Halo of Aramis, every single person in the book is a person of color. Oh. Notice that it isn't a very long list. Good luck finding a lead in Asian role in Hollywood where he isn't fighting or doing some kind of weird funky kung fu that they've made up. Or try finding a Hispanic role where the person isn't every stereotype that they can pull out of their magic sombrero. Southeast Asians have to be mathematicians or astrophysicists and they have to be really, really smart in, in everything and they have to talk with these really, really thick accents that you can barely understand, mainly because they're halfway made up, like this guy. Oh wait, he's white. If they're Native American, they have to be. They have to be some kind of Native American expert. He's somewhere out in New Mexico and Arizona and there's probably a picture of a cow and some tumbleweed and yeah, of course there are exceptions to this pathologically stupid set of unspoken rules. However, exceptions should not be the modus operandi. That leads me to ask one question. Where's the disconnect? Story time. So, while I was going through like my 7B, 7B, that's not a real word. I hired a 
developmental editor to help me kind of like work out all the kinks. And you know what? She was fired. You want to know why? Because she kept making suggestions other, you know, outside of my grammar. My uncanny ability to do run-on sentences, the right dialogue like I'm writing a screen play um, that doesn't really work in a novel. That's beside the point. She kept making these suggestions that I change or raise here. Now, remember, all of the characters in my book are people of color. They're, that's it. They're all people of color. It's, I did that on purpose. The final straw came when she said, Angel or not, this person is a person of authority and power and respect, and it makes more sense for them to be Caucasian. Yeah, she got fired. <laughs> now, by all means, I know I'm not the only person that's happened to. This is pretty much the point. And it's led me to believe that I think I've kind of narrowed it down to what it could possibly be. Maybe. And that is a story starring people of color, but not specifically about people of color, like an urban film like Best Man 2 or something, or Straight Outta Compton. Or if the struggles in that film don't mimic white ones, then that story does not belong in science fiction or fantasy. Now if it was a romance or a piece of literary fiction, something culturally based and nuanced, fine. Fill it with all the POCs that you want. Why? Because that story is about you, your culture, the human soul, pride open for consumption. As long as you stay over there with your blue magic hair grease, your emotions and your frajada, your life and your kente cloth, your saris and your han box, then we're absolutely fine. Oh, they wanna, they wanna actually like be stars. Uh, tell them. I'm handing them like a sword or something and tell them to say something cool like Bay or or uh, uh bro bling bling <laughs> on fleek. Their swords are on fleek. Just make sure they're way back in the background. Bring the white people up front. Yeah, but don't call them white people, they're Egyptians. Is this like a science fiction thing? If the black guy wants to be like a mage, he can be like the enforcer mage. He can be like the bouncer to the Egyptian club. Straight out of the Sphinx. <laughs> Hey Asian guy, you're the you're the kung fu master. Sail over here, you meet the, the Egyptians. You're the kung fu master who teaches them how to fight the black guy who's gonna be the bouncer at the at the Egypt club. We're gonna give you a cool hat and like a little goatee and you um, say all your L's like R's. You've got a you've got a, a master's degree in English? Okay, so I guess you understand me when I say say your L's like R's. <laughs> Remember ya, hi guys! And you're, you're Japanese. Same thing. Wherever they do kung fu at, that's that's you. That's you, guy. You said there's some Indian lady who wants to be an elf. Oh, that's on the other set. Uh, uh, they're doing like a Lord of the Rings remix. She can't be um, an elf. We only, we only let we only let the white people be elves and dwarves and hobbits. You said that they're made up people. I don't understand you. Tell her if she can be a tree. There's a Native American girl who wants to be the girl on fire. Why is everybody coming to me? She wants to be the girl on fire. Tell her we have a white woman for that already. It's okay. And and I think we have enough colored people. Yeah. 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 Call my PR person. Have them draft up my apology for all of this in advance. I don't know how to fix this. I'm not even sure it's my responsibility to fix it. I don't know how to make screenwriters and directors and editors Stop leaving people of color on the cutting room floor to make room for stronger, faster, whiter leads. I don't know how to stop an agent from turning down a manuscript because it stars Fakira and Taehung instead of Riley and Hunter. I don't know, but I plan to find out. But until then, I'll continue to dip my pen in the African diaspora, along the shores of Japan and Korea, across the red bricks of New Delhi, the streets of Mexico, and anywhere over the rainbow where I can paint the world with this wonderful color. Because I am a writer of color, and that's what I do.